Now let's look at the mechanism of fear conditioning and fear extinction in the amygdala. That almond-shaped structure in the middle of the slide is the amygdala. The lateral amygdala at the top is receiving input from various brain areas. The VMPFC is ventromedial prefrontal cortex, an area known to process emotion. Hippocampus is for memory, sensory cortex, thalamus, etc. And these inputs are coming into either a two synapse circuit on the right or a three synapse circuit on the left. And as you see here, the input must be neutral or absent because there is no fear response. What can happen, though, is that you can get fear conditioning, which is a form of learning, especially if something horrible happens. And if that input comes into the lateral amygdala at the top and hits the two synapse circuit, it'll jump over the intercalated cell mass and go into the central amygdala and stimulate the output from that amygdala and you have boom a fear response with affective problems terror panic and the autonomic problems of increased breathing increased blood pressure increased pulse and if that occurs so dramatically even once that it cements that circuit into place hardwires it it's called fear conditioning it turns out that glutamate can cause plastic changes and what I call a form of diabolical learning, kind of an evil learning. These circuits essentially learn to have a fear-conditioned response unthinkingly, automatically, like a reflex. And that is so hardwired that it's considered to be almost irreversible. But some people's fear responses go away. How does that happen? Well, you don't really forget your fear is what the theory is. It doesn't just kind of reverse this conditioning synaptically. Instead, you have a new learning. And the new learning can compete with the hardwired old learning of fear conditioning, which is shown here with the two synapse circuit on the right. If a new input comes that says something counter to the conditioned of the fear. In other words, that's not so bad. Uh, you know, you're overreacted. Some psychotherapy, cognitive behavioral therapy particularly, is a form of learning. And if it's successful, the theory is that it goes into the three synapse circuit on the left and stimulates a neuron that does terminate in the intercalated cell mass. And the significance of that is that these neurons talk to GABA neurons, which are inhibitory. And that inhibitory neurotransmitter can block the excitatory glutamate and, if strong enough, will win. And if such is called a no-sphere response and a fear extinction phenomenon. It turns out that it's a little more reversible to fear extinction than it is to fear conditioning, so that if you don't keep practicing whatever second learning blocked the first learning, the fear extinction may go away and your fear will come back. A novel idea has arisen from the neurobiology of fear conditioning in the amygdala. That's called preemptive treatment. In other words, is it possible to stop the permanent conditioning of fear in the amygdala rather than just treating the consequences after it's already permanent with anxiolytics? This idea is based upon blocking norepinephrine input with beta blockers. Let's look at how norepinephrine is involved with the fear response. The locus ceruleus has noradrenergic fibers that project to various brain areas that are activated in great extent when you're fearful, projecting to hippocampus with norepinephrine, projecting to ventromedial prefrontal cortex with norepinephrine. This in turn can trigger input to the amygdala, which says go through your two synapse circuit and quickly activate the central amygdala's output and let's have a fear response. Now, if that's dramatic or long lasting and robust, it can be permanent and of course set up fear conditioning. What would happen if we block the noradrenergic input? The theory would be this could possibly prevent fear conditioning from taking a hold. We'll look at that in the next slide. Now, if your noradrenergic input has just recently happened and you're within minutes or hours of experiencing a traumatic event, maybe it would be possible to block that noradrenergic input before the resonance in this circuit is so robust through the 
two synapse circuit that fear conditioning gets established permanently. That's the idea of using a beta blocker after trauma in order to prevent the formation of fear conditioning. There is some evidence, of course, in some uh, experimental studies in man that is very early that suggests that this may be useful and that would eventually wipe out the hippocampal and the ventromedial prefrontal cortex's input to the amygdala so that fear conditioning never sets up. The synapse is never permanently ingrained and fear conditioning never happens so that the fear response does not become permanent.